I've just launched some new soap bars on Amazon. I'm gonna talk about my experience and how we're trying to get them to get off the ground here in the first 48 hours. My name is Stephen Pope and I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. Here are the soap bars. This is an Age of Sage product. That is my brand name uh, for some of my gift giving items. Uh, one of the nice things about being able to share my own items is I'm not afraid to kind of showcase my actual products and you guys can judge whether you think I'm doing them right or wrong. So uh, one of the biggest challenges of getting a product off the ground is getting the imagery correct. And I think we've got some things correct in place and some things not. Still working on a video. Um, I really am very proud of this particular infographic. I thought this was done very well. Um, so this particular soapbox has four items that it comes with. Some eucalyptus, aloe, sandalwood, rose, nog champa. I don't even know what that is. And cedarwood tea tree. Uh, so... Looking at the fact we've launched this less than 48 hours ago, there's obviously zero reviews. We're gonna bypass using Vine. We're not gonna gamify any reviews whatsoever just to see if we can get sales without doing any external traffic or any external plays, no search, find, buy. It's basically to showcase like what you have to do to launch a product and get it off the ground, doing it the quote unquote right way or the organic way. So this unit so far has eight units sold in the first 48 hours, 100% based on Amazon PPC. So how are we doing? If we scroll down, you can see obviously we've spent some time writing out some text, the bullet points. You know, we've got some emojis here, which are appropriate in my category, but may not be appropriate in some other categories. And you can see the A plus content. We had all of that ready day one. Uh, some nice big imagery. We've put in a bunch of text in text here again, and again, lots of text. So uh, at my Amazon guy, we have four copywriters dedicated to just writing copy all day long. Product grid isn't quite completed, needs to link to the other soaps as well. So a couple more edits are underway. So in 48 hours with 48 units in sales, how are we doing from a keyword standpoint? Cerebro's data is probably behind, doesn't quite have all of the keywords we've indexed for in the first 48 hours but at least 89 are showing up. And you can see on the top right here, some are even breaking at the top of page one. As one example, you can type in masculine soap. Go ahead and type this in on your own computer. See how I'm doing on your side as well. Uh, you can scroll down. These are all ads. There's another ad. So one, two, three. We've got the highly rated section, which is also an ad. And we're in spot organic spot number four. Now, obviously with 17 different ads above here. It doesn't feel very high on the, on, on the indexing yet. But the fact is we're in organic slot number four in under 48 hours with zero external traffic for the term masculine soap. So the proof that we're trying to show here is that it's possible without reviews to break the top of page one if you build the content correctly. And that's exactly what we did. We invested in a bunch of text, every single photo, has alt text in it, right? So if we inspect the elements, you're gonna see alt text. Uh, and I think, uh, I think I probably wouldn't go woman on this one, probably need to redo that one. Um, and as you sc scroll through, you can see some of the alt text that we've chosen to use on each of these to try and get them to rank. Uh, and lots and lots of text in the A plus content. It leads to immediate indexing by having lots of text and lots of alt text all those keywords inside of the actual physical text and all that makes a big difference to showcasing this. So that's where we are so far from an indexing standpoint. Um, I, I don't feel like this image does me any justice compared to the main image. And so I'm trying to figure out like how to rework some of this. Uh, I like, I like this image cause it kind of showcase. Okay. Yeah. You put this in your bathroom next to some stuff. This is not a real shot of the soap. We probably need to do better here. But when you launch an item, sometimes you have to just launch with something versus launching with nothing. So it's better than nothing. Uh, these are actual soap images that we did take and then we superimposed it into a bathroom setting. So uh, infographics when you're light on imagery are always the best way to go. Uh, so the pomegranate, cherry, tangerine, grapefruit, mango, papaya, raspberry, rush, those sort of angles. So far we found that the fruity version uh, is not doing as well because of steeper competition. We've actually been surprised by that. Um, but the fruity version, not getting off to the ground as quickly. Uh, and so we're looking at how fruity soap flavors have been a little bit more uh, competitive, a lot more options out there. But I do like the fact that it's more colorful. If you 
you, you look at the kind of the, the masculine tones, the grays and the browns that we had on the other listing versus these nice pinks and yellows, way more flavor appearance uh, in this version. Similarly, we did unique copy and text and all A plus content built out for that. Um, and so each of these units are in currently a parentage. We're, we're considering changing the variation name from his and her to more of like fruity and masculine. I think that will make that change probably in the next 24 hours. You'll see other changes to the images as we kind of reconfigure and try and make things better uh, to, in, to convert them better. So right now off to a really good start with indexing. Uh, I'd say on the conversion side, we're a little weak still. Going to be running some PICFU tests. Here's an item that we launched in May. I generated $135,000 in three weeks right before Mother's Day. Uh, and I only spent about, I think it was eleven or 13000 in ads uh, to give you some context to that result. So this particular product, we ran three PICFU tests to decide the main image. One of the biggest findings that we found was having the fluff over the top of the item, which is what naturally would appear, is not as good as having it um, below. So we had to graphically edit the items on top of, of the confetti, if you will. So that was a big finding with the PICFU test. I'm not really sure what I'm going to test on this yet. I've been trying to debate that and looking at the competition. Um, you know, it's an artisan box that this comes in, which is kind of a big deal, but I don't know how important that is in the, you know, trying to determine our click-through rate to get results from ads and organic results. Going over to our advertising console. So we've spent $200 so far in the first 48 hours. Uh, obviously very high ACOS at 160% with eight units coming in. So we're advertising at a loss to get the item off the ground. This is very common, very necessary, especially since we're relying upon advertising with zero product reviews to begin with. Uh, so these are normal results. Uh, built out like that. We're trying to find which keywords are going to convert the best. Then we'll rework the copy to tailor in and zone in on what we see the best results with. So whenever you're creating uh, new products, I recommend that you launch various uh, types of, of targets. You want to segment out, build out every type of campaign structure you can, everything from an auto campaign. A lot of people turn off their autos after a while. I highly recommend you keep them on. Uh, I think it's very valuable to continually see what comes out in an auto campaign. Sometimes an auto campaign will do worse. In our instance, it's actually doing better uh, than our initial manual efforts. So if we scroll in there to kind of see what's going on, we can go into uh, the ad group and go down to the search term level to see you know, what results are showing up. Now, obviously, this is such a small data set. We can't really make a lot of changes or understanding of what's going on. Um, but we have, you know, if we look down this list, you can see like what items uh, are coming up in the search results. You've got a few clicks here. So if we go look at this particular competitor's ASIN, our product showed up on their listing and they decided to buy ours instead. Um, so that's interesting. I, I think these guys have done a really good with their good job with their main photos. So the fact that my item beat them out is surprising at 5,600 reviews. Um, so sometimes when you see a lot of data and if we saw the reverse, let's say we saw 20 clicks with zero sales, we might know that, Hey, we need to negate that instead. So what is it about our listing that beat out this, you know, obviously one single data set can't really make any determinations, but it's, you know, it's interesting to go see and take a look at it. Um, I kind of bet that Sage Soap as a term is not going to do well for me. Um, just because it's my brand name doesn't necessarily mean that there's actually Sage in it. Um, and that might be a mistake on our part on um, what we chose to do there. We did pick up a sale on Nog Champa Soap already, which is great to see that. Um, so these are the sort of things you're going to look at on a weekly basis as, as a campaign and a product matures. One campaign I'm going to build for you and show you how I would do it. This is going to be a soap display campaign. And there's a new feature inside of display that's worth checking out. So as we scroll down here, I'm going to, I'm going to start off at 25 bucks a day. Um, restock limitations make it really difficult to launch new items right now. It's like, how do you justify um, the, the stock to those new items versus the items that you barely can keep in stock that are working? Um, but if you select product targeting, you add your items like this optimized for conversions. You can see down here in the products to target, there's a section called similar to advertised products. And this is a new feature, uh, which we've added in here. And I'm going to set the default bid at probably 101 and just see if that will get me any traffic. Now in my category, beauty 
is very high PPC costs. And so any lack of conversions on clicks can be very detrimental on the, on the pocketbook. So you can see here like a, a category targeting on, on bath soaps for 280. It's a little questionable on whether this is going to work or not. So we're going to, we're going to come in here and we're going to try it out and see what happens. But to be honest, I expect that to fall flat pretty badly. Um, you know, maybe if we could look in here and see if there's anything that's particular um, artisan in nature. So soap making bases and melts might do a little bit better. Uh, look at the cost though. It goes up almost, you know, about 80% more. So if we type into the search box, just to see if there's any category where we can type in like something like artisan uh, to see if there's anything else that might be a better fit for a category. So you got artist trading cards went kind of a little bit the wrong direction here with boards and canvases and stuff like that. So it doesn't look like there is an artisan type category um, available for us in the soaps or anything even remotely close to that. Uh, but we could try something like handmade and see what shows up there. Uh, so maybe a handmade angle, people that like handmade stuff might like artisan soaps. So as we scroll down to see if there's anything that would fit that category and really nothing showing up here, unfortunately. Um, so kind of coming up short a little bit. So if we change that to maybe like a gift angle, see if there's anything. So there's baby gift backs gift baskets, um, maybe maybe something with the word box in it might be good. So gift wrap boxes, uh, that's kind of actually in the stationary and gift wrapping. So that's a supplies angle. Unfortunately, not kind of what I was looking for. Uh, category gift cards, probably, you know, somebody looking for a gift card doesn't know what they want. So probably pretty rough to try and advertise that as well. Um, so really coming up short on category targeting for for our soaps. And I don't have a lot of faith that this is going to be a good display type category, um, which is why we didn't initially launch that in the first 48 hours. But we're going to try, we're going to try and hit bath soaps. Now, bath soaps is such a broad category. We're going to probably do pretty poor with this is going to be my guess. Now, of course, you can upload a logo and try out um, customizing your creative and typing in like a different headline. So you can check this box here and come in and say, you know, something along the lines of, artisan soap, handmade, and see if that attracts, um, you know, any additional clicks versus your typical, um, I got a little bit of lag here on the, on the, the database. I've had a lot of lag out of advertising console this week. It's been really rough trying to manage all of this. All right. So let's try artisan soap handmade, uh, for him and her. And let's see what that does. Um, cause we got two different types. And then once we click on the launch campaign, that'll take us back out of the out of this particular campaign setup. Some of the other things you're going to need to do when you launch a new item is make some decisions based on inventory. And so right off the bat, we had eight sales on the masculine soap, only one on the fruity. And so that was kind of some initial data to show that we're probably going to have a more popular product on masculine. And it's like, okay, Christmas is coming up. You're supposed to have your inventory at FBA already for your Christmas rush restock limitations and all those situations. And it's like, okay, well, I only had room to send in like, you know, 200 quantity between the two SKUs to begin with. So what do you do next? So we actually placed a reorder for the soaps today. Um, so we have a thousand of these sitting at the warehouse. We're going to make another 1000 and we're betting um, strongly that we're going to be able to sell all 2000 out going into the Christmas rush. Um, it's a little bit of a gamble, a little bit of a challenge uh, to, you know, to see if we're going to recoup uh, that investment. Meanwhile, we have the former uh, mom gift box set, which we are overstocked on based on being out of season a little bit. Uh, but the moment Black Friday rolls around, these things are going to fly off the shelves. And so we know that's going to happen. Um, but we were trying to have kind of like a, an artisan soap version. So, so that's the thing you got to figure out is like, okay, when do you restock after you've launched your item? And I think you got to make that decision in the first probably five to seven days. We placed the reorder already. We're betting bullish, right? And that's not something I would recommend generally. I'd, I'd wait a week or two. Uh, but with a tight timeline, like we're operating under, we just, we just, you know, you know, made the decision to go ahead and do it. Um, and so we had the finances to, to do that. Most, you know, most of uh, everybody who's invested right now into Amazon is pretty cash poor and inventory heavy. And if you're not, you've actually made a mistake because uh, cogs are going up, supply chains are wreck. And if you don't have a year supply of stock right now, you're in trouble. So I'm, I'm living what I preach and I'm going long on inventory right now, uh, believing that it's going to pay off, especially when everybody else is stocking out um, second week in December, first week in December, even as early as. 
Uh, okay, so the next thing, you know, you got to get your images right. You got to get your advertising right. Uh, one of the things I don't think is correct yet is the actual title of the listing. And so I noticed that the word artisan was just completely void and not present. Um, also, you know, whoever wrote this on my team, they capitalized of. So there's like these minor things need to be uh, addressed. I also don't like putting uh, my brand name at the front, even though you're supposed to. Sometimes you can get away with it in certain categories. Um, and so I'm going to actually rotate this around. So fruity scent, soap, artisan, soap set. So that's what I'm going to, I'm going to put in the word artisan. My idea here is I want the first five words to set the hyphen, which will allow me to, and maybe even zoom in, make it a little easier for you guys to read. Um, so we want the hyphen after five words that sets the canical URL. So this allows us to get, uh, the word artisan into the canical URL, which is kind of beneficial. Then the ingredients come next. Um, these are imp important to have next to the word soap. So we got the word soap, got the word artisan, um, handmade, scented soaps. Do we have the word scent twice? We do. So I don't know. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Um, the question is: Is should this be for women? You know, does a man want to use fruity? Questionable. Who knows? Um, so we'll, a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, keywords though, in the gift category are based on, um, gender. So handmade soaps, uh, by age of sage. So, and then I like to put the, um, the amount that comes with it at the very end. This, this is actually per brand guidelines to put this at the end. They, they do prefer that. And I like to put it in parentheses, um, and it formats it a little bit better. And that way kind of shows like how many units are going to come in this. So you get one of each type of soap. So when we look at that data and then compare it against what's ranking, one of the things you're going to want to do is go over to the search results and type in something that you think strongly represents your product. So I type in artisan fruity soap. We can look at the keyword rankings to see how people are doing. This, this particular item right there is crushing it. This item right there is very, very similar to ours. So we're going to take a look at this and see, you know, what these do. Um, I think that their images are very basic. They don't show any detail or information. So we're going to beat them on that, but we're going to look at their keywords and see what they're doing. Similarly, same thing here. You know, what are these guys doing? How, how does theirs work? They don't really have that great of imagery. So I think we can beat them from an imagery standpoint, but they obviously have thousands of reviews. So let's go look at the Cerebro data and look at their organic, barely any advertisement being done on this item. So they're all profit, no growth focus. And then let's look at, so the word organic also comes up, natural comes up. So these are things that we're probably going to want to consider adding. Organic as a term, a little sketchy, not sure if I want to add that word, um, but I definitely think natural is a good angle. So we're going to go back over to, to the title here. So fruity scent, artisan soap set, um, and then we got the flavors. I think that's probably more important, but we're going to want to, we're going to want to stick the you know, I don't think that anybody cares about vegan. So I'm going to, I'm going to replace that word with natural and you know, here's proof of it. If we type in the word vegan over here to see kind of what shows up. So show phrases that include vegan and see, you know, how many keywords are, are like that. So, so, you know, I guess I was a little bit wrong, a little bit more credit for that than I anticipated, but nonetheless still much smaller than the artisan angle or the natural angle. So let's see what that looks like. So artisan, there are 21 keywords that are showing up with artisan. So apparently artisan's not as important. So that's interesting. So maybe, maybe the vegan angle actually does matter. Um, so I had gotten rid of the word vegan and I switched it with natural. I'm going to actually change that back. So maybe natural, uh, vegan cold press soaps. Um, all right. So let's go back and look at some further data. See if there's anything in here that maybe um, we haven't taken advantage of. So we've got the handmade angle. I'm gonna clear those filters, hit apply. And then we're gonna sort this by search volume and see if there's any other takeaways. So the organic angle is really interested um, in that. So if we scroll down, you know, you can't, can't put your competitor terms. So I'm not gonna put Dr. Squatch in the search terms or anything like that. Uh, that would be a big blatant black box thing to do. Um, as we scroll down, Super high volume, still don't see kind of what we're looking for yet. Uh, don't have any goat milk in this. And not really seeing a huge takeaway 
for anything else. So it's interesting that Artisan's not the angle, which kind of surprised me a little bit. Um, and I don't see any additional. So that one's kind of a bust. So let's go over to this one next and see what they did. Um, and we're going to look at some of theirs. So exfoliants, that's a, that's a word I wouldn't have thought of. Charcoal, it makes sense. Uh, soap for a wedding, that's interesting. Hopefully you guys are, are washing your bodies before you go over the weddings, right? Uh, as we scroll down and we look at some of your other ideas, peppermint soap men, raspberry soap, salt soap, you know, it's basically all pretty scent focused. We're not seeing any generic keywords that really show up. Um, as opportunities. So handmade, artisan, and natural and vegan seem to be the four keywords. So we're going to go back and look at our title again, see how we feel about this. Um, so you can see the original right there, kind of our evolved fruity scent, artisan soap set, all the ingredients. We added the word natural next to vegan. Um, I really wanted to add the word artisan, but it's just not, it's not justifiable. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and then we're going to edit the other one too. So same thing on the masculine set here. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and switch this around. Um, so up top I have in the URL bar what we have on the other one just to kind of give some context. So Fruity Scent Artisan Soap Set, Masculine uh, Soap Set. So we're going to go Artisan. We're going to throw that in there. Even though I, I, I just like the, the phrasing of Artisan, even though I'm wrong that the search terms don't support that. And then we're going to change the four pack at the end here. Uh, soap set for men by age of sage handmade then we need the word natural so natural gonna insert that there and then the tea tree angle is probably gonna be where we're gonna win the most that seems to be very popular right now um, and some of those some of those scents and flavors so let's go back to Amazon and see if there's anything with masculine soap masculine artisan soap that comes up that would be a little bit different. So we're gonna look at the natural. So like this, this is definitely really, really strong packaging shot right there. Uh, look how colorful some of these images are. And if we compare that to mine right there, uh, it does not look as good. I think if we ran a pick food test that I would lose compared to some of these color shots. So these are the guys to beat. I don't know how we're gonna beat them. Um, but we're looking at, yeah, it's just a really strong main image. That's a nice shot right there. Feels very burly. Feels almost like ice blocks. It's pretty good. Uh, I really like that outdoor angle there too. So let's look at their keywords and see what they're doing here. See what we could gain to update our own title for. See what populates. So they're indexing for 1,800 keywords. They're number one for artisan soap, um, men's soap sets, bunch of keywords that make a lot of sense exfoliating um it's interesting that people are actually typing that word out only 46 volume though as we scroll down though we see other instances of exfoliating uh you got dr squash showing up despite it have not being that brand that's very common to rank for other people's brand names so men's natural so a lot of heavy focus on men 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 so if we go back and look at our title here let's see where we put that so do we have the word men in the title? And we do, it's at the very end. So maybe uh, maybe that needs to be a little bit more of a focus. So masculine scent artisan soap set, maybe the word men needs to go there instead of the word artisan based on the search volumes. And then find a way to you know work, um, work that in somewhere else. So handmade artisan scented soap, by age of stage and we'll cut that out right there. So we made that change. Let's go back to the search results. So bar soap, do we have the word bar in there? Doesn't look like it. So we might want to consider putting the word bar. I don't know if they would be considered a bar cause they're kind of like square shaped, which is interesting. Uh, so let's look at the competitor. They are, they are the same squares though. So maybe the word bar is not a terrible idea. Uh, so if we put the word bar in, where, where can we do that? Masculine scent, men, men soap set. Uh, if we scroll through here, cold process, cold pressed bars, maybe cold pressed bars, something like that. See if that does any better. 
might, I might go back and do the same thing with the old one we did. All right, so I'm going to save that. Let's see how let's see how that affects the indexing here over the next uh, few days. We'll, we'll make another update video and kind of showcase our progress. So hopefully you found that valuable. You got to see, um, you don't have to have everything perfect on launch, but you have to have everything filled out. So even though um, during this video, you, sh you saw me being like double take and looking at some things and I'm like, oh, I didn't quite get that right, right? Um, and so I'm making adjustments post launch. That's very normal. Um, you don't need to be perfect upon launch, but you got to be complete upon launch. So having a checkbox on a bunch of things. We'll have our video up um, of the actual soaps being opened. One of the things that's not showcased in my, my listing as far as I felt like that we didn't do very well on was showing like how good the box is. So the box has some really cool stuff in it. We have added and updated the, uh, the brand store already. So you can see we've added a soap section. One of the updates that's coming out right now to do sponsored brands, you're going to have to have four sub pages. So make sure you've got at least four built out um, with multiple items. Otherwise, they're not going to let you do sponsored brands anymore. Uh, so if we look at uh, the listing, we're going to have a few things come out. If you like this video, the next one you should watch is the one where I talk about my advertising from my original mom gift box. You'll very much appreciate the information we share very in depth, showing you all the campaigns, how we got that one launched up to $130. $5,000 in three weeks. My name is Stephen Pope and I'm the founder of my Amazon guy. Thanks for watching.